one o'clock, so it's time to start. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Nikki Allison, and I'm with Sava Group, um, and we offer hosting and development, and we're the room host for today. Um, so we are welcoming Matt Obert and Jasmine Gigas, and they are going to talk with us about onboarding developers with um, cloud-based development environments. And so I will let y'all take it away. Thank you. All right, guys, uh, can you see my screen? I got some slides up on there. Yes. Fantastic. I'm going to just get started then. Oh, boy. I knew that. Hold on. There you go. Clicking on it makes it work. So here's our agenda for today. We're going to introduce ourselves. We'll talk about local development environments, a little bit about cloud tech. We'll talk about cloud-based development environments. And then we're going to do a live demo, which is actually a pre-recorded live demo, but we did it very recently. <laughs> it was live when we did it. And then we're going to wrap up with a little bit of a recap on the pain points of the local development environments and how cloud-based development environments helped. And if we do it all quick enough, we'll have time for some questions and answers. Hi, everybody. My name is Matt Obert. I am the director of screening and esteemed. Um, I have been a Linux system administrator and database administrator since 1998. Uh, uh, became an early adopter of uh, PHP based um, uh, content management systems like Drupal and WordPress when they came out in the early 2000s. And I've been a DevOps engineer uh, since 2018. So local development environments, we've come a long way since the old days. We used to just use Telnet or SSH connections to remote LAMP environments where we would maybe we would edit files directly with something like VI, or we would just use something like uh, FileZilla or some FTP client to move files back and forth. And then over the years, we figured out ways to sort of move that LAMP environment into our local desktop or um, laptop environment. And then we got into virtualization and then into containerization. Um, and the containers started to move out into the cloud in the sort of DevOps pipeline. And then what, what comes next? How about you move your entire local development environment out into the cloud. So we can do that now. Uh, it's, it's not exactly new. This has been going on for a few years now. Um, and we're only going to demo dev panel today, but there are many options. I've used several of these, um, but we're just gonna do a, a live demo today of dev panel. And I'm gonna hand this off to you, Jasmine. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine Jigas and I'm a Drupal developer at BCT. Um, I have experience in front end, of, front end design uh, before I went into development and I worked with for-profit, non-profit, government agencies, um, just all different types of projects. And I must say, uh, cloud-based environments have really, really helped me out on most of my projects. Um, so most recently, some of our project issues was that we had tight deadlines and we had to demo progress on different branches um, to the client and our PM. And we just needed something, we had to deliver the UA, U, in a UAT environment on the cloud. And we just needed something that was easy to deploy um, and that our that our developers could actually work with and develop on and not really have to worry about the client's um, environments. And that's how DevPanel came into play. So I'm gonna do a live pre-recorded demo of uh, DevPanel. And I'm gonna stop sharing and you can uh, start sharing. All right. Can you all see my screen? I can see it. All right. So here is the dev panel login. I agree to the terms and conditions and I click with a single sign on, continue with Google. So here is my workspace. I click demo workspace, no projects, but I can create a, one from a template or from scratch. 
enter my project name. Hit next, choose the version of Drupal or whichever CMS. Next, GitHub, I choose GitHub because that's the one I'm using. I link my account. And I'm gonna use the resist, um, an existing repo. And I'm gonna choose the repository, Asheville demo. I'm gonna choose master, hit next. And then I'm gonna confirm and create my project. So here is the master branch. It's not deployed, um, but we can go ahead and deploy that. So it takes, um, you, can, you can import different databases from scratch, URLs, S3, Git, or you can copy from an existing application. I'm gonna do from scratch, hit next, hit next, next, and deploy. I think we're doing great for time if you wanna just let it run. So this takes a little bit of time. Um, you, you see your notifications on the right-hand side. While that is going on, I'm going to show the GitHub repo. And I'm going to actually see if Matt is a collaborator on there. He should be, and he is. So once this is deployed, Matt will be able to pull and push to this repo. I just wanted to make sure he had access. You can see the logs right here. Um, the logs going and let's show some other things, settings um, or demo workspace. If you go to people, this is actually how you add a collaborator. And you can see that Matt's actually a collaborator. I can also delete him by pressing on the red trash can. He's a workspace admin. So he has a little bit more uh, roles that he could do in this site. In order to create a collaborator, those are the different roles um, that I can put on people who I invite to this project. Press the blue check mark. Invite link. This is important because if you share this link with a collaborator, it gives them the access as a as a developer, uh, which isn't as much access as a workspace admin. So if you go down and click on invites, um, once you have someone in this on this page, you can click and there's an invite link that actually uh, allows them to perform the role that they selected, um, that you selected when you created them as a collaborator. For settings, um, this is just the page to actually go to if you actually want to just get rid of your site and delete it. Um, activities lets you see the logs of everything that's going on with your project. custom domains, you actually have that option with dev panel, people you've seen, uh, resources, um, applications, this is actually your application. See, I have a spot instance going on and projects. This is the main page that you'll see. Uh, this is how you can access your project. It's currently still processing. So we will see, just wait a little. It's still pretty fast though. <laughs> it is. All right, I'm gonna just speed it up a little since this is a pre-recording. All right, and then once you get the notification that it is success, successful in the right-hand corner, here's your screen for your application. So you have activities. Um, again, you can open up the logs and see that's the time that it took. It really didn't take that long. It was like, it was very, very quick. Um, let's see, there's backup. So you can create a backup. You can you know, have your web hooks, configuration, custom domains, logs, images stat sites and a danger zone if you want to completely destroy this branch. 
Um, so I'm going to go back to the actual application, hit overview, go to the URL so I can see my brand new installed Drupal site. And here it is. Very nice. And also, I think one of the coolest feature, the coolest features about uh, this about Dev Panel is that it has VS Code already built in. So you can see that this is created to um, have a reproducible build. And as you can see, I have my JSON in my lock file, but I also have my web and vendor file here. Um, so I mean, it's everything that you want in a reproducible build is is at is in dev panel so drush is also um, already configured and there you go that's some uh some proof that drush is already there it's actually i mean this is just it's ready for you to develop you even have your php admin so you can actually import your database if you prefer to do it this way So since um, I've already invited Matt to the repository, I'm going to let him take it away and show his portion of uh, how you can actually work with other developers using DevPanel. Fantastic. Now I am going to share my screen again. Um, in just a second. All right, you guys can see my screen now. And so I log on to DevPanel, same way that Jasmine did. I'm gonna use single sign-on with Google. It already has my cookie, so it knows who I am. Now you can see I have my own workspace, but I've also been invited to Jasmine's workspace. There's her, uh, that, they're both called demo workspace, but you can see who owns it here. And there it is, demo for Asheville. This is the same one that she was just showing you. And indeed it's the same repo that she just invited me to collaborate on in GitHub. So there's two separate, you know, you're, you invite somebody to collaborate in the Git repo and then also uh, in, in um, dev panel separately. This is the source code. Um, and now I can uh, work on that. I can, I can um, edit that code and make pull requests. Here's the master branch, which is the one that Jasmine already deployed. So um, the URL, as she showed you, is a plain vanilla Drupal 9 with the Olivero theme looking lovely, but you can also see you haven't created any front page content yet, right? Now, let's say I want to, as, as my next step, I'm going to create a new branch for a junior developer to come in and just work on, you know, the front end or something. And, um, and they're um, gonna need to have the content of the existing site. Uh, there are a few ways of getting this in there. I, the one that I demoed <laughs> is what I'm sort of most uh, comfortable with is I just use Drush to create the backup and to import it. But um, so what you can see here is that I've, I've got the Asheville demo article and I just published it. Um, so you can consider this like our production environment now. The, the container instance that's associated with the master branch of the repo now has our content in it. So I'm going to now deploy another branch. It could be like a dev or demo, or it could belong to a certain developer to have their, um, their sort of cloud-based workspace where they're gonna actually use their own VS code to um, merge things back into our project on GitHub. Um, and as you can see, this is what the VS code looks like in the master branch. Um, so that's with the default theme with the white background. And I'm going to go ahead and um, deploy another branch. Same steps that um, Jasmine demonstrated before. I'm going to deploy from scratch, no files. Just hit next. All the defaults are good. 
and we can talk a little bit, I guess, while this while this is happening about um, what I'm doing here is that I'm going to create a separate branch and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to configure VS Code uh, so that it's got a dark theme so you can tell them apart. And I'll show you how I get the database out of the production environment and import it into a lower environment. Um, it's not quite as um, like uh, if you're familiar with Acquia Cloud where you can just <laughs> drag and drop uh, from, from one instance to another and it automates all that stuff. But it's actually very, very easy to do this and it's pretty quick. So um, of course the deploy is the, is the part that, uh, that takes the longest, but not really too long. Um, it's always going to take a little while the first time you build containers, but then after that, once they're built, it takes no time to spin them up. Um, so it's it's really only the initial build that takes the longest. Um, and you can see what's happening now. If you can read the small print, I don't know if you can, but the, the bottom line says that it, the task is execute shell file. And that is actually running like the deploy script in the background. When that's done, um, you'll see that it has to set up um, some networking, like a route for, uh, for a domain um, that is going to set up a C name for you uh, to, so that you can see the, the website and you can see the um, VS code or PHP my admin along with that. It really shouldn't take that much longer. Um, thank you for your patience. And uh, trying to think what else I should talk about while it's happening or if I should show you anything else. Here it comes. Does anybody have any questions while we're waiting for this? Does anyone want to unmute yourself? I should have the notes up, and that's a really good suggestion, Celine. Um, but I don't. Hey, I uh, had a question about, I guess, how DevPanel compares to some of the other cloud-based environment options out there. Yeah, um, you. Uh, there's. I've I've tried to set up a similar thing with um, with Gitpod, and I didn't really get as far with it. Like in terms of having um, like an actual usable thing that I would use on a project, I was able to do a really cool demo with it. But I I wasn't really it it didn't have the same kind of management um, for me. It looks like it just finished. Uh, but I'll come back to that question in a second. Here's the URL for the actual um, website. So we'll see that, again, this is the plain vanilla install with no front page content. And then um, I'm going to open the VS Code application, and I'm going to change the background color uh, so that you can differentiate it from the other one that is the container for the the main or master branch, which is the um, or is sort of our de facto production environment. And this one is going to be my demo environment. So I'm switching it to dark mode, which will kick in very shortly. Oh, yeah. Mark it as done. There we go. And now I have to open the terminal. And um, I'm just going to use Drush, which we already demonstrated. I, I should uh, zoom in on this a little bit. Um, Here we go. Let me make one one bigger. All right. 
and uh, just resize this. So we'll use um, Drush SQL dump to create a backup file. And I'm gonna use the shell redirect character here to dump it to this file name, uh, Asheville demo underscore the date when I did this, yesterday's date. And um, that's the command that I'm gonna use to create the SQL dump. I hit enter and it should not take very long. And now down here, there's the file. It's in the cloud file system. So right here in VS Code, I can simply right click on that and say that I wanna download it to my local computer environment. And there it is, it came down in my browser, just like downloading any other file from any other website. I'm gonna show it in a folder. And here in my downloads folder, um, we should see very shortly that the file is in my local file system. So now I'm gonna upload this pretty simply into the other instance. And we'll know it's the other instance because when I go over to the other tab, it's the one that's in dark mode. And once again, this is what we're looking for. This is our content of our production instance. And that's in the SQL dump. So I'm gonna take that from here and um, go back to the VS code. And I'm gonna use a variation of the, I'm gonna, oh, first I gotta get the file on there. Right, right, right. I, I'm gonna just simply click and drag it from the local file system. This works the same on Windows, Mac, whatever. And you can just click and drag it into the VS code there in the browser. And it's gonna upload that file into the cloud file system so that you can, um, now access it from the command line. And I'm gonna use Drush again. Um, I'm gonna use Drush SQL Connect. And the shortcut for that is to say SQLC, Drush SQLC. And uh, I'm gonna use the opposite um, shell redirect character to take the input from this file. And in fact, I'm gonna say time before it so that we can see how long it takes to import. It shouldn't be very long, but again, this part is the, the part that's doing the lifting. Drush SQL Connect is going to read our backup file. And that's, uh, don't use Emacs key bindings. <laughs> if you're trying to, I think I try to hit, uh, you know, go to the end of the line with the, Control E, um, VS Code interrupted that. But there you go, it only took two seconds to import and I'm gonna make sure I clear the cache before I reload the page. Um, you should all be very familiar with Drush CR if you are Drupal developers. So once again, here's the page before I reload it. It looks like we have no front page content and after I reload the same thing, the suspense. There it is, the Asheville demo article. When in the course of human events, we demo dev panel. So, um, so it works. And now this is another container, like a totally different container environment that's associated with the different branch. And I can do, um, I can stop sharing now. And that's, or actually I should keep sharing and I should put the slides back up. I believe we got a couple more slides. That's what I'm gonna do, slide. Share screen, this is the one. So how was that for the demo? That was pretty good and should be able to have a little bit of a review here. This is um, the stuff, uh, Jasmine, if you wanna talk about this, because it was your slide, I believe. Yes. Um, so yeah, those are the issues that we had. Can you uh, go to the next slide, please? Yeah, did I? Oh, I hit backward. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> okay. this is the one. It's the problems. Yeah. Yes. So some Great. of the problems that we had with the LDEs is we just, we couldn't help each other debug quickly. Um, clients, we wanted clients to do UAT on our dev and test environments, and we didn't have that. Um, and no one could actually see our progress. It it took 
we spent about two months trying to set up uh, servers. When I got to uh, my BCT, I no one had a local development environment at all. I was able to set that up, but just being able to help everyone else using DevPanel, being able to go in and see their actual branch and what they're working on just allowed me to help my team way more than I ever could with just using an LDE. Um, and yeah, we wanted automated testing. We wanted our CI CD pipeline. We wanted this, these, these, things, but we just didn't have them. And DevPanel was able to allow us to do that. Um, and, you know, we could do our paired programming. And to answer the question about DevPanel being um, the, like, a how, it, how it's different from other environment, well, cloud-based environments, um, we were able to run AWS in our own account. Uh, that was super important to us because we, I work with a government agency. Um, we had full access to everything, so we can integrate anything, solar, memcache, um, S3s, anything like that. So that's the, that's what really stood out to us about DevPanel. Excellent. And these are some of the kind of the flip side of the same coin, the advantages of the cloud-based development environment setup. You don't need to configure and ship laptops to all your developers. It works the same from any computer or operating system. All you need is the browser. Standardization, the whole team uses the same tools. All the environments are identical. Security, you can grant or revoke project access uh, via single sign-on or SSH keys. Um, all environments can be scanned continuously in the cloud. And then support. This is, I think Jasmine alluded to this already, but she had a lot of trouble setting up um, some of the things, you know, just with their own AWS uh, to set up the CI CD pipelines and stuff. And um, basically all of this stuff, the dev panel team was able to step in and help them get that set up very rapidly. Um, and they continue using their own hosting, but this is like a layer of tools on top of it. Also, as she mentioned, pair programming, you can actually share an environment with two or more developers um, so that you can actually be like remotely looking over someone's shoulder and be in the same environment as they are for debugging, for learning, or for onboarding. And then also just quick handoff whenever a dev leaves a project or even if they leave temporarily to go on vacation, or if you have a globally distributed team uh, on a tight schedule and you want somebody you know, when somebody punches out in one time zone, someone in another time zone just picks up where they left off. So all of those things are, that's our basically our presentation, the live demo and the review. And we are ready now with plenty of time for questions. We have like 15 minutes for questions. So let's see um, if we can go back to, um, who is the person who asked about the, the differences between the different cloud-based development environments? Yeah, that was me, uh, Dan, Dan Guren. Um, yeah, I've, I've worked with uh, a couple different ones, like the Drupal pods that are based on, on, on Git pods and uh, code ready workspaces from, uh, from Red Hat. Yo, I should put that one in the, in, uh, on the slide uh, if we do this again, code ready. I haven't used that one. Um, I, I used Red Hat like early, early in the day as a, as a Linux sysadmin, but um, I, I haven't kept up with that one. I have used Cloud9, which used to be, um, they used to have, it was their own product. It was a company called Cloud9. Uh, and I used that when I worked with uh, Launch Code, which is kind of, they do um, coding boot camps and training and career ready, uh, you know, kind of um, um, career coaching for people. But um, we, we use that uh, in conjunction with the CS50 um, course on edX platform. So um, Cloud9 was my first uh, experience with this before Amazon bought it and took it over. And Cloud9 actually used to be easier to use. Um, I think I, I have actually set it up with Amazon and it's, it's just a little bit more, um, you know, you have to do a little bit more stuff yourself to set it up now, uh, uh, which is which is fine. But I think that's that's one of the differences um, between something like Cloud9 and something like DevPanel, or even with um, GitPod. And as you said, DrupalPod. I did a demo on that um, for an esteemed lunch and learn uh, a couple of months ago, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really great, but it just doesn't have the same kind of um, 
like the the way that I set it up, I just couldn't really figure out how I would use that with a team working on a real project and how I would set that up for like build and deploy pipelines to actual environments, hosting environments. Like like the nice thing about DevPanel is that you've got AWS on the back end, you know, and you can deploy to your production environment that is your AWS that you're hosting it in, you know, this is just like a, a wrapper over that. Um, and with Gitpod, I found that it was sort of like, it was very easy for me to, um, to set up a, a repo that would spin it up in their kind of, um, their, their little bubble environment where you can use that to work on a project, but you wouldn't use that for your production environment. You know, you wouldn't host it on Gitpod, right? So that's kind of, that's a difference here. Um, there's also, I think there's, there's a couple other ones. I think, um, Acquia also has their own thing and, um, and GitHub actually has code spaces now, which is, I believe something to do with, um, Microsoft Azure. Uh, so that's probably very similar, uh, Docker containers on the, on the back end and stuff, but I have not used that one. So I can't really compare it. The ones that I can compare really are cloud nine and, um, and, Git pod or Drupal pod and um, and then this one dev panel. I hope that answers your question. Any other questions? Anyone else? Yes, uh, I saw earlier that uh, you were using, I saw a tab that you displayed that said static site. What does that do? That's very interesting. I might want to uh, hand that one off to Salim, but I can tell you in a nutshell uh, what it does is that they allow you to, um, you can have your, like if you're, if you have a Drupal project and you put something like Tome, uh, the Tome module allows you to generate a static site off of your Drupal and you can just deploy it as a static site, which has a lot of advantages for security and speed and you know if you've especially if you've got like a i mean people there's a trend now toward um these sort of jamstack kind of like you know uh type of things that you can host on netlify or on github pages or whatever where you just have like a, a static site that's like a thin layer over i mean you can use something like gatsby or something that is like uh like a decoupled react front end but it really is it deploys like a static site so it's just html and javascript and then it gets its content from the back end or whatever or in the case of tome it literally would just be like all of your pages exported to just straight html and uh, javascript and whatever asset files that are like your images and stuff like that and then it actually would get exported to a separate directory and you deploy that directory to your production environment so that way there's no you can't have like a sql injection attack that puts your database at risk or anything like that it's completely just a it, it uses your dynamic uh, cms backend to generate a very secure very flat and very quick loading um, static site. And that's what DevPanel has uh, an option to do that type of hosting. Yeah, hey, this is Salim. I just wanna step in and say, Matt, you, you got it, you got it 100%, right? So um, with that static site, you can actually keep your dynamic site behind the firewall and just publish out the static site uh, to the public. So you can always use your dynamic site as your, for your editing and stuff, but uh, push your push the uh, static site out. Yeah, I think I think this is something that's a big selling proposition for large organizations that have a lot of Drupal seven sites and they can't afford to um, migrate all of them to Drupal nine before Drupal seven becomes obsolete. So um, in, in a situation like that, you could set up your site as a, a behind a firewall with the obsolete version of Drupal and export all of the content of that site as a static site so that you won't be um, directly exposing the, the end of life version to the internet. You're just publishing the content as just straight HTML, which can't that's, be hacked. Yeah, that's actually how it came about is that uh, we were working with the university and they had I think like 700 sites or something like that. So uh, Drupal 7 sites, and they wanted to move all of them 
make, make static sites so that they won't have to they won't have to migrate them to Drupal nine. They they could just like transfer them into static sites and, and just leave them as Drupal seven on the back end. It's a pretty interesting approach. I think it certainly will buy them time anyway. I don't know if it's <laughs> I don't know if it's your forever solution, but it certainly will buy them a lot of time to think about uh, what what their next steps are. It's very cool. Any other questions? Yeah, so I have a follow up question. If so, if it's producing a static site, where does it push that to? Can you push that out to like an S3 bucket? Because we're in Amazon, right? Yeah, it's uh, it actually yeah it pushes it out to S3 with a uh, cloud front uh, front end to it. So yeah, awesome. Okay. Uh, and it's all it's all in the in the client's account. So and here's a question: How does the cost work? Um, the the model for for Dev Panel is that it's a wrapper around the client's AWS account, so the client pays AWS directly. So, so Dev Panel doesn't take a, a percentage or anything off of that. So, it it usually ends up being cheaper than okay. All right, going with the, yeah. Hey, Salim. This is Justin. Um, oh, hey, Justin. <laughs> I have several production sites running in DevPanel, WordPress, Drupal 7, Drupal 9, Backdrop. So if anybody has more questions, I can show you stuff. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you too, Justin. Uh, that, that was great. I think that's everyone. <laughs> All right. Wow. We came in under time this time. We got, I, I, <laughs> cause we rehearsed this and got it cut down as much as possible. So we could run through it. So we wouldn't go over. And now it's like right at the 40 minute mark, <laughs> you know, well, thanks to Matt and Jasmine and thanks for everybody for joining us. And thank you for thank having you. us. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.